welcome everyone to today's social system mapping on ramp session for August 8th, 2022. Your hosts today, as usual, are me, Christine Capra, and Kara Martner as tech support and all around uh, publish, publishing um, producer of our stuff and all around make sure everything falls into place. And um, what this is for those of you who are new to this context is my thing are the sounds when I'm is it loud when someone joins and you do you hear my okay okay um so what this is is essentially this is a, a, a vision about a possibility the possibility being that social system mapping um, can help uh, transformation networks and change groups um, be more effective and to become self-organizing more quickly and so this is, um, so all of these, we have regular Monday morning sessions and they're all sort of a piece of the puzzle of leaning into that vision and learning our way into that vision um, or that possibility. It's also a learning opportunity. So it's, a, it's a, an opportunity for people to learn about social system mapping and to deepen their knowledge of social system mapping. It's also an opportunity for, um, us social system mappers to learn from everybody who shows up because everybody has relevant experience that's important to this process. Um, it's also a community of practice. So there's a bunch of us who do this, who meet regularly. So some people show up to get a little bit of information and then they move on. And then there's a, a, a core of us who um, work regularly on developing the methodology and the theory and the, all of the learning that goes into social system mapping. And um, so that's also part of what this is. And social system mapping is core to this process or to this community of practice, but uh, not just in terms of creating maps, but also in terms of contributing to the practice, to the methodology, to the theoretical background. So we're not all mappers, um, but we're all sort of working in some way or interested in some way when we're together um, in advancing the field of social system mapping. So that's what this is one part of. For today, we're gonna do, um, we're gonna do some chat intros in a minute. Jim is gonna share his 50th class reunion map, which is kind of a twist. Uh, it's not a, a, an intentional change community, but, um, but it's, it, it's, a, it's a sort of a, a maybe a, a novelty use of a social system map that is fun and interesting. Um, so Jim will present his map. We'll have some questions and answers. We'll have time for Q&A. And then for those of you who are new, um, we the formal session is always designed to last an hour. So we'll go to the top of the next hour. And then um, everybody who needs to jump off can jump off. And But if there's anyone who wants to stick around and dig a little deeper, ask more questions, um, just have informal conversation, um, I will stick around uh, after that half hour and I'm not sure but Jim might are you planning on sticking around Jim yep okay so Jim will Jim will be around and probably Kara at a minimum so um and you can just continue to so just stay on the line and you can continue to ask questions and um uh and and, and be in conversation with us however it makes sense for you so that's the agenda let's go ahead and put uh intro or uh, intros in the chat so let's start with your name, pronoun, and location. And happy 50th reunion, Anthony. <laughs> Guess you must have graduated the same, no, a year later than Jim, because Jim, you made this a while ago, right? Okay. So for today, we've got Cleveland, California, Philly, outside of Philly, Richmond, Virginia, San Francisco, Berkeley, Cascadia, almost evenly West East Coast balanced. Um, not, not exactly, but so uh, also next in the chat, let's put um, what's what one primary network that you're part of or working with. This is an assumption we make, but um, if you weren't doing network, some kind of network weaving or network work, you probably wouldn't be interested in social system mapping. So we're interested in what that work is. We have the 
Donut Economics Coalition, the Northwest Cooperative Network, hmm. Migration Justice Orgs in Central America, Transformational City Network, and Relational Coordination, Systems Thinking, Social System Mapping Networks related to connecting children in nature. Um, well, thank you all for all of the important uh, uh, pioneering network weaving work that you do. It's um, it's fun and interesting and, and new work. And it's also because it's new work, it's challenging and we're still figuring it out. And so there's lots of unknowns. And so um, appreciate everybody's efforts and pioneering in that. Um, and then lastly, what brings you here today? What what's what's um what's up for you relative to this session? Okay. All right, so um, hopefully we'll get to touch on, at least um, touch on all of those questions or give you some sense of where to go uh, for more information if it's too big for today's session. So for those of you who are new, I'm gonna give you a quick overview of how a social system map is, is created. Um, so, it, the, what you see in a social system map is um, usually when you see the, the, the nodes, the dots and the lines bouncing around on a screen, um, that's part of a social system map that is um, in the Kumu platform. Kumu is, um, is a, an online publicly available, um, it's free for publicly uh, findable maps, but you can pay 10 bucks a month and ha or have private maps. Um, by subscription, but it's a it's online. It's interactive. It enables people to to really uh, to create very custom interfaces uh, around any kind of graph visualization. A graph visualization is a dots a, a, a dots and lines visualization. So mind maps, system maps, all kinds of maps um, that that have dots and lines. Those are all graph uh, graph visualizations. And Kumu is designed to enable you to do really cool graph visualizations that are interactive and online. Um, but what Kumu doesn't do is gather the data for you. So whatever you're going to visualize in a Kumu map, uh, you, you need some data, data about the dots and data about the lines. Um, what, what are those lines? What are those dots? What are their characteristics? And if you are um, visualizing a network, of people and um, a network of people who have, have various dimensions, systemic dimensions, various different kinds of perspectives, different kinds of roles, different kinds of goals, um, that when you, when you start being looking for that kind of um, complex dimensionality about human beings, um, then you need to start, you, have, you need to have a way of gathering the data around those human beings and asking them what their relationships are to these dimensions. And that um, is what we, we use SumApp for that. SumApp is the tool that my business partner, spouse, and I created for this explicit purpose. SumApp, so you gather the data in SumApp. It's basically um, a, a sort of a very specialized, very fancy for its purpose um, survey tool. And so we gather the data in SumApp from the members of the network directly themselves. And that then data um, is, is formatted and designed to work perfectly with Kumu. So we just take a link from some app, plunk it into Kumu. And then in Kumu, you can do all kinds of custom visualizations, filters, does, you know, decorations, et cetera. So you gather your data in some app, put it into Kumu, design the map that you want to share with your network. And then we take a link from Kumu and embed it back into some app so that the people who you are asking 
uh, about their personal information about how they fit in the network don't have to go to another tool. They can just access the map right while they're in some app. So they can input data and see the map in the same tool and go back and forth really easily. Um, so they don't have to have a Kumu account or have any extra login stuff. So that's the, the, the platform that creates a social system map. There's two pieces to it. They work well together. It can be a little confusing for everybody when they first in, encounter a social system map to understand that there's actually two parts to this puzzle. And so I just wanna explain that to you before we jump in. And with that, I'm gonna hand it over to this <laughs> handsome young man <laughs> who has grown to be this handsome old man <laughs> um, who will talk about his 50th high school reunion map. So you can take it away, Jim. Thanks, Christine. Yeah, I couldn't resist. Um, um, so, you know, social system maps and the process of mapping uh, can be used for all sorts of purposes. Um, but one that just is a surefire hit is to use it as a visual directory. And that's what we're talking about here. Uh, this is the way that I've used the map for this reunion. Um, and the visual directory, um, uh, basically echoes many of the relevant features of all the, all the social system mapping will do. And, um, so basically that's, that's the framing for this. Um, the context is that, uh, we were doing a 50, 50th high school reunion and they decided not to do it. And that was such a shame. And I said, no, nah, no, nah, we could do it on zoom. So we created a two day reception and anyway it was great um but we had some some things operating in the background my high school there are two in our working class mostly working class white working class suburb of detroit two like high schools with 3500 kids in each and uh, my graduating class had 625 kids and there's an active facebook group um that has maybe about a it had about a hundred 125 people in it. So there's a little bit of a conversation going and there was like four people on a committee that was responsible for pulling it together. So I joined that committee, hadn't seen any of these people for 30 years. Um, the, I'm gonna share my screen here and go through several pieces. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna ha talk a little bit about the visionary hat and social system mapping a little bit about the uh, sense-making hat, a little bit about the technical hat. Um, we're gonna try to do this all in 20 minutes, but um, whoops, I'm not sharing my screen, am I? What happened here? Hang on, what you, happened? You here? are sharing your screen. You were sharing it. You were just sharing your whole desktop with the sort of- Yeah, that's what I was trying to do, but it wasn't. Oh, there we go. You were. It's funny, I'm not seeing my green. Is, is it around yeah. it's around the whole desktop is it yeah that's kind of weird no i don't see it but i i know it's there oh, okay anyway so you're seeing my screen yes um so i just wanted to give you a sense of you know we have a facebook group and there's you know there's a lot of participation and um but you know it's uh, very linear and certain people connect and so forth people are nervous about getting together face to face so um um, I suggested that we, in addition to the, the, uh, the Zoom convening that we would do, that I would create a map and was able to embed it in terms of in, about what it was and so forth and build it within this Facebook group. And that was important because that's a communication um, a method for all of this. Um, so for the recept for the uh, the gathering, we had sixty or seventy people, but we had uh, about one hundred and twenty five people engage in the map. So um, you know, basically from the visionary perspective, we needed to we needed to talk, we need, in our committee we needed to decide sort of what we were trying to do, and one thing we wanted to do is basically engage people in their memories and start to rethink about their connections. We wanted to um, uh, 
uh, have a persistent place where people could go and come back and go, who was that? What were they thinking? So forth. So that was a piece of it. Um, we wanted to build, start rebuilding the relationships that had been, you know, I mean, you couldn't remember half these people, most of these people. Um, and at the same time, we wanted to build kind of a safe online culture. So we wanted to develop a way of, a, a way of being with each other, even though we weren't with each other until the Zoom meeting. Um, so we tried to build all of that. I tried to build all of that into the network, but our little committee of six was thinking about it together. Um, so um, the other thing we could do is to start making our relational networks visible, which would nobody's ever saw that before, except we knew our clicks and we knew those other people over there and so forth. So um, one of the decisions that we made was to focus on the grade schools that we came from and the junior highs that we came from and then the kind of relationships that we had going forth. Um, so what you're seeing right here is the SumApp dashboard. And you know, we were able to have a communication. Oops. You stopped sharing. Or it stopped sharing itself. Oh, oh, no, no. I stopped sharing. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So um you know, we started. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna give you the the picture of the folks from their perspective, right? So they come in. This is the Sum App dashboard, and the very first thing they get is an invitation and a place to upload a picture of themselves and a little tagline and so forth. But when they go to the survey, um, we start them out easy by just personal information. That's not too threatening. And then easing them into what elementary school they came from, what junior high, and then what their interests were. And then we start asking questions that are evocative, a little bit evocative, memorable teachers, memorable moment in high school, high school's club, Brandero. And what, what's happening here is people as individuals are engaging with the mapping process here. And they're starting to relive the memories and they're starting to think about themselves and their pathway in their life. And then we hit them with this question, what have you been doing for the last 50 years? Which is kind of an overwhelming question, but it, it makes people think about it. And, you know, it, it is, it's no longer something out there that starts to become the mapping process itself starts to engage them in the community. Um, so, you know, it's not completely touchy feely. There's like, you know, a little competitive been there, done that, but, you know, I'm talking about falling in love and stuff like that. Um, um we're looking at my, my thing right now and memorable life moment. I mean, you're having to make choices and stuff about this and how are you going to present yourself to this crew of people that maybe you haven't seen in a long time. And then we go to current situation. So we had that past and then the current situation it's like what's up with you right now and even <clears throat> you know what's your bucket list what do you got to do so that's pretty much <clears throat> excuse me what the engagement piece of it was when you go to the connections piece um you know you're presented with all of these people and um for example this is one of the women that was on the committee mary mary here and I marked her, I have a chance to mark what kind of relationships. And I just said acquaintance, I barely knew her. But at this point, I'm going to change that to, you know, we're reconnected at long last. And um, that immediately gets put into the map. So then they can go to the map itself. And um, Again, we're looking through the eyes of some app here, but we're able to control what views we give them, you know, the information on the side here uh, about how to navigate the map. Um, and we're in the directory view right now, but we can give a connection view. And also we thought it would be interesting to provide them with a, a, a geographical view. So they get a bit, a bit of this. 
And I'm going to just jump over to the maps, the raw maps themselves. And I've taken all their names off because um, this is a private map. Um, if I roll over people, you're going to be able to see their names, but I think they'll forgive us here. Um, Jim, can so, I, yeah. Can I interject? So just in case you Please. didn't catch what he just did, he just went from looking at the map in the sum map interface to now he's looking at the map actually in Kumu. So now he's in the Kumu platform where he can edit the views and he can make changes. Um, and you can tell the difference because it doesn't have that blue bar across the top and the bottom. Um, but so this is where generally just the map maker interfaces in Kumu to control things. And he's doing that just for, for whatever, I think, because it's, uh, oh, because this, the views here don't have the names showing, um, whereas they did in the sun, in some app. Well, actually they don't, you know, because it's, it's live and it's coming through oh. without the names. Cause okay. I said it. Uh, um, <clears throat> but in any case, yeah, I did that just because, um, whoops, because, um, you know, you can see the little on the technical side, this is a little bit of the code that allows this view to be what it is. And most of this code is stolen from um, Christine and Tim in the maps that they um, do. And there's a lot of stealing that goes on here um, to present this stuff. All of this information over here um, is also coded up in a formatting language. Um, that's, uh, you can copy a lot of this stuff to create those effects, but all of it's controlled right there. I just wanted to be able to show you what's behind the scenes there. But um, basically, um, when people see this view, they're getting a sense of, if I roll over myself, there's a little quick blurb there. Um, and if I click on me, all the information that I put in that survey shows up there. So not only um, am I starting to engage with the map that way, but now I can explore all these people at my leisure um, and see where they've been going, um, all of their information. And it becomes quite interesting as we move from me engagement to kind of a we engagement. Um, this is the connection view. When I click on connections, you get this view. And this is like a total hairball, as Christine likes to say and others like to say. Um, not super useful um, in and of itself, but uh, you can start to play some games with it. We've got some filters here. The connection filters um, basically allow people to indicate what kind of relationship you know you saw when I changed my relationship with Mary um, it shows up as one of these types of relationships and so if we were to look at who had the strong relationships in the high school um, you see this mix and you see a lot of people don't have strong relationships in high school but there's a lot of clustering going on here if for example I go in there were two junior highs and look at the relationships in the junior high, you get a little bit of clustering here and those continued on into high school to some extent. Um, if I were to look at the other junior high, you see a much denser set of relationships. Um, and this is, this is both sets of dense relationships, but here's the picture, like check out what happens with these guys right here. Um, when we're all connected, they're connected to people across the junior highs. So, you know, this is mildly interesting, but when you show this to a group of people who are very invested in it, um, we had some great discussions about the relationships that people had in their junior highs and why one of the, what was going on in the other junior high that created more lasting and dense relationships. And that was interesting for the entire collective. So there's a situation where we've gone from me to we to us, now thinking about us in total. And that's a little bit of the sense making um, that happens. But sense making happens at all different levels. It happens 
as I engage with the map and my relationships, um, it, engage, it, 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 it happens as we think about ourselves in relationship and it happens when we do it collectively. Um, let me get out of that. And uh, let's see, I've got going quick here. Um, let me just find myself here. So there I am, and when I focus on myself, and this is what we taught people to do, um, and I'll go up one degree away. These are my relationships of all different sorts there, and that's another way that we can see, um, whoops, we can see what um, a, a sense of me in relationship to, to my peers there. Um, lastly, uh this is a, a geographic picture it's like where did people go and um this was actually really interesting to people and you know they're all over the country not too many people around the world um i'm zooming in on the town that i grew up in at loyal oak where quite a few people are in that area and you can drill down and really see who's actually still in Royal Oak and who's moved out to the suburbs and stuff. And that was another cause for conversation and sense-making uh, between people. It's like, why did they move? When did they move? You know, did they move for love? Did they move for jobs? Did they move just to get out of town? Um, so I think that's... Uh, pretty much that I wanted to say, uh, I'll say a couple things technically in a minute, but the thing I wanted to say is that, um, you know, we had, uh, we had a structure between the Facebook group and the little committee and the people that had relationships to embed this map in. And we had an event that was driving us to a conclusion. So things were moving together without much help. And then by putting this visual directory in, it, it started really engaging people. Um, and what's funny is there was an, a huge amount of energy that was just naturally a part of the gathering and people thinking about these last 50 years together. And so before we got on, Christine popped up some pictures from her yearbook. And she was had the same lit up face about thinking about these memories as 50 of us did in these conversations together in the map. So these maps don't exist outside of the context that they're in. And if you can tap into the energy and uh, use the map to drive it, um, it, it becomes a successful kind of thing. Um, so we had 125 people engaged in this map. Um, we don't use it now, two years later that I know of. Um, and that's because we're not engaged in using it and having convenings and so forth, or, or I haven't done anything with those folks around it. Um, so that's pretty much, I think I got about two or three minutes left. Um, let me just show you really quick some uh a couple of other things and then we'll call it quits um we're back on you can see my screen right mm -hmm. um i created a playlist of um inter you know a two-minute video introducing it uh folks to this visual directory um how to how to how to do the survey how to do connections, how to navigate the map and a little bit of their own personal sense making me and we on, on their own and uh, how to navigate the view, um, the connections view and how to opt out. And Stevie Ray Vaughan somehow got put in there just for fun, I guess. But um, uh, anyway, I will actually make that available to you. I put it in the chat. Is just, it's like about 20 minutes and you can poke around and just see um, 
this seemed like a very important thing because I didn't have a way to connect with these people outside of this offline kind of thing. Um, so I wanted to show you behind the scenes on the Sum app. Um, you, you know, you've either, you either know this stuff or you don't. Um, but behind that survey is the builder that uh, Christine and Tim have built so that you can define all of those fields um, by just grabbing and pulling these things over and then uh, in changing the changing the forms the way the uh, fields the way you want. Um, the connection questions, uh, we only got one relationship question in this uh, tier two product, um, but basically create those there. And all of the, one of the things that Christine and Tim did was, you know, they, they realized that the process of surveying people, reminding them that there have been changes to the map and they can update their connections and stuff is a pain in the butt. So they've allowed, they've created an invita initial invitation email that people get and you customize that the way you want. A new faces email saying, hey, new stuff is up. Reminders for people who haven't mapped. Super useful to have that. And then a whole way to manage who's got those, who doesn't, who's responded and so forth. Um, and um, your ability to manage and see all of the, all of the people that are in the map and you know whether they've responded or not, um, so forth. Let's see, what else have I got here? Um, I'll send you this link. This is all of the activities that you could do around prepping a sum app. I don't know if this is big enough for you. Prepping a sum app uh, survey. And here's some of the activities around prepping a Kumu um, survey and or uh, map. And there's, anyway, it's a way of, of sort of putting this all in perspective. It's not finished. I started it a couple of years ago to, to you know, keep everything, uh, to hold it all together because there's a lot of moving parts for myself, but I'll share it with you. And if it's of use, that's great. Um, and I think that's it, um, I'm a little bit over time, but uh, I think that's most of the parts that I wanted to share. Happy to take questions for a few minutes. I don't know how long we've, I think we've got seven or eight minutes for questions. You're on mute, You're on mute Christine. 20 minutes. Did you? Yeah. Anyway, we've got plenty of time for questions. So, and thank you, Jim, that was wonderful. You did a good job of sort of spelling out some of the thinking. I liked that, which we often just get a presentation of a map, but but your like intentionality and in, in the sequencing of the survey was really helpful to share. Um, Seth, go ahead and I'll, Tim, Jim, I'll stop facilitating, but um, I jumped in. Go ahead, Seth. Okay, um, Jim, so I love this, this is great. Um, I didn't come into this session thinking of it as a um, as something I would think about doing myself, but now I'm calculating and my 50th anniversary is coming up in a year and a half or so. Um, so I'm thinking, you know, maybe this is something to do. I, I really like this idea. Um, and I, I feel full of, um, not cynicism, but I, I think it reflects my own cynicism of my, my relationship with high school. Um, because I've, I've gone to, we were going to get into it here. <laughs> I've gone to a couple of reunions and I've, you know, I, I like forget so many people and, and all this kind of stuff. And I haven't gone to the last one because I felt like I wasn't really well connected. And of course this could create more connection. So, you know, I, I want to play with the idea. And I, I think it's, it's, it's very interesting, but what I want to ask about is the, the, um, the degree to which people were engaged. I saw there were, you said 125 people in the map itself, um, something like that. I saw there were 142 people on the Facebook group. And did, did you say there was a lot more people in the original class? Is that what I recall? 
Yeah, it was about 150, and that's the email list that we had to work with. And it doesn't quite overlap with the Facebook group. There's more right. people on Facebook, or it's it's not quite the same. You had you had participation from about 125 out of 150. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it was probably about 105 when we yeah. launched this at the time, and since then another 20 have come on. For... That degree of participation, my cynical. I know. I've gone away. Um, is that, because one of the things I was thinking was like when you were making some sense making conclusions about the degree of connection of people who came from one junior high versus the other, I was thinking, well, if you only got a, you know, a 10% response rate, you can't really draw those conclusions, but you got more like a 90% or closer to 90% response rate. So those conclusions are more valid. Um, and and this is the other related question is how much did people actually how many people actually put in how much metadata? Like, like the people who participated, did they fill in all these fields or did someone just fill in the easy ones? Um, let me see if I can answer that quickly by, so you're looking at the map here in Kumu and you see down here, you have this, um, you know, the ability to look at the table of the data and up here, I'm looking at the elements and uh, let's put some, let's, this is the basic data here, but here's a description of themselves so we can see how many people did that. But let me just look for uh, what's, what's a memorable Don Darrow moment. And um, uh, oh yeah, what have you been doing with the last 50 years? Okay, so those are all the fields that I can see here. And um, if I sort by description, you can see that, uh, yeah, about 60 people start, started to really dig in. So half the people um, showed up. Uh, memorable moments. Um, yeah, about... 40 people had memorable moments and and let's just the last one what you've been doing for the last 50 years um I'll get out of there i think that's probably it and yeah come on yes yeah, 670 people put in memorable uh what they've been doing for the last 50 years so um yeah, I so absolutely right about the engagement piece. My here's here's my take on that. One, I was talking about the energy that people had around it. We had a concrete event and we were pitching it in the Facebook group, which was fairly well attended. So we had their ear, we had their intention, and they wanted to show up. And now they had this way on this map. And I think those are really uh, important ingredients. Um, one other experience that I had was for the Liberating Structures Global Gathering in 2019 or 2018. Um, it was the first time people got together. This is a community of several thousand people, 300 people registered. And we pitched it and we had the prime influencers, you know, Keith McCandless and other people that, that to pitch it. And so we had 300 people show up in the map in two weeks, they just like blew up into the map. And it was like talking on the Slack group, which was another side channel of communication uh, about it and so forth. So, you know, and Ben has, Ben Roberts has for his now what activity created registration was through the survey. So to register for the event, you basically mapped yourself, you know, with permission, of course. So those are really important if you want to kickstart. Another thing that uh, Maya Townsend had, has demonstrated is in an online event where people get together on a Zoom call, you map in the Zoom call. And she, whoops. She did that in person. That was an in-person event. Oh, right, right. I it mean, could have been on a Zoom call. You could do it online. It would be a little bit easier online, I think, because everybody's online. But anyway, yeah, it was, yeah. was live. 
in real and, time. And then it, and, and, you know, displayed the map as it was growing within the, I don't know if that was multi-day, anyway. So I think these are really good questions, Seth, about a map that just, you know, grinds along in terms of engagement and then like really making it part of what you do, part of what you do um, in the work that you do. Um, the other thing you said about cynicism, sorry, taking so long on this answer. The, the thing about you said about cynicism, about getting together, there was a lot of uh, hesitation and reluctance and people I mean, we heard a lot of comments privately about like, I don't know, I don't know these people, you know. And so part of what we did is two parts of it. One is had the map, breaking it down into little groups of your, your elementary school buddies. And then, you know, so we had those groups where people were comfortable in the groups and they showed up on the map. And then when we actually did the reunion, you know, I put them into breakouts by those groups or by affinity or by um, their their interests. We did a whole series of those things. And, and of course we got them drunk on the first night of the reception, but, and we just did random breakouts there. And people were kind of freaked, but kind of into it. And anyway, by the time we got to the reunion, anyway, I'll say one other thing. We showed a slideshow of people who had died, 70 people had died in our class and um just saying it you know um created a moment visually there um so so there's the map and then there's the things you do around it the social technologies that you employ and the map is part of it so thanks great answer I had a couple of questions which you have started, you know, one was how did the map influence the event and you started talking about that or, or how you planned the event. And the other had to do with, um, I'm wondering about an increase in connections that the map, did it help connect people who haven't? weren't connected. Um, maybe in a sort of unique sense. I mean, if the reunion was in person, there would be an increase in connections. Um, but I'm just sort of wondering about connections going across the whole mapping process and increase. Um, great. I, I, <laughs> I, boy, did I hit the wrong button. <laughs> I left the meeting. Um, here, let me, let me get myself back together here. Uh, okay. Are you seeing my screen now? Uh -huh. Okay. Um, let's see. Reconnected long at last was one of the categories. Mm -hmm. um, let me, yeah, we're good there. Hmm. Oh, yeah, let me get off my. So these are all reconnections at long last oh. as a part of the reunion process. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many of these are due to the map, but it could have been a question that we asked in the map. Um, I'm not sure our participation rate of 60 or 70 people would be enough to get a sense of it, but either through the reunion or the mapping, um, there are 94 connections that were people said reconnected at long last. And they, they had a choice of all these other connections, you know, these were Dondero people or whatever, because you only get to choose one of these. Mm. Um, so that's pretty interesting um, in and of itself, but. I don't know if it really answers your question. Mm -hmm. That would be a great question to ask. So, so, go, yeah, go ahead. 
So it sounds like um, like you gave the example of breakout groups that you use the map to inform that. Were there any other things about the reunion that um, you planned as a result of learning more through the mapping process about people and? Um, well, one thing I was going to say about culture is I think the kinds of questions we asked that pulled people into their hearts a little bit, you know, they weren't super deep because people were a little, you know, scared. But as people started opening up to each other on the map and you start to see, you know, you get this cycle of I'm going to make myself vulnerable. How am I going to be received? And if you're received with empathy, then you start to see it's safe. And so other people become vulnerable and you start, you know, you're looking at how did everybody respond to this question about what did you do with the last 50 years? And you see some, it was a range, right? Some people just said, you know, I, I, I did this for business. I got this job and this, and other people came from the heart. So you, you get to see the whole range if you got enough people here. And so then you get to choose how you want to show up. I've sort of lost your question. How did it affect? Um, so, my theory, which I don't know, is that the map itself started to engender a culture of safety. There weren't people just dropping in. It, it didn't become mm. culturally appropriate to just drop in and say, you know, I was the head of this corporation and I did this. And that. Um, people brought heart. And that's one of the things we wanted to mm. um, we wanted to uh, engender. I don't know how much control we had over it, but I think the questions you ask and the prompts you, you make mm -hmm. set the intention for the container, which is really important. Any, any facilitator does that, so. So what I'm hearing is actually uh, through writing, people could probably express more of themselves and through their heart in some cases than they may have in just the face-to-face -face interaction. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. I think that's absolute certainty. There are some people that just, you know, we got everybody to turn their camera on, but that's a big step for some people. Some people continued to lurk, um, even though they had very rich responses in, in the verbal, in the, in, in, on the map. So yeah, it's, 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 both and, 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 you know, it's a multi-level, multi-level transformation and the visual directory is one piece of it. How about anyone else that's got something that you're just holding there and Hey Jim, this is Tom and really good. I love learning about this. I can't wait to use all this in real life uh, applications. And um, I think the questions I had about how this catalyzed engagement, you know, was, was really interesting. That's a uh, question. But I also uploaded the YouTube things you mentioned, but it says they're unavailable, they're hidden or whatever. So I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or if there's some setting hmm. on those seven videos, uh, just FYI, but thank you for that. It's, hmm. I look forward to learning a lot more. Sure. Has anybody else got experience with maps like this that they want to mention or that is a resonance or a difference? I do a lot of activity uh, you know, mapping. That, uh, it, that it's that in conjunction with showing the goals or activities and how they all interrelate, we also uh, show the actor. The actor could be a one person, a group of people, or even non-person, like a computer could be the actor. So this would tie in with something like that, where this is the activities, this is how all the activities interrelate, and this is the, the, the actor involved with it. So that's kind of related. Yeah, I, 
You know, I was thinking something you said, Seth, you were thinking about doing this. I would encourage anybody to jump in with any idea they have. And if it's lower stakes, if it's a low stakes map, then you get to learn. And I just, you know, I'm continually learning and forgetting, but uh, continually learning um, as you do this. And the other thing is, if you don't feel confident, say around some of the technical stuff, there's a bunch of technical people in this community where there's, there's, there's some good handfuls. And it's not just Tim, um, although you can go to the Sum App help in the Slack channel for this, the Sum App workspace, Slack workspace, there's a channel for help and Tim will help you out there. But there's also other people that look at that and will help you. And you know, you can get on our community of practice map and find people who are willing to offer up that skill. And people are also, you know, looking for opportunities to collaborate. And it's like, I don't want to be a visionary. I don't want to do this. I don't want to pull the people together, but I would help you, you know, get through some of the technical hoops, or maybe I would take it as an opportunity to do your map, the technical piece of your map, or to train you on it as I do it with you or whatever. Lots of possibilities here in this community of practice. And the same is true of the visionary hat and also of the sense-making hat. Um, you know, and you, yeah. So anyway, I'm, I'm encouraging like Seth, I'm like, go for it, build a map and, and junk it if, you know, if it's, if you're not happy with it, but, but, you know, build some relationships with folks that you can work with in this community to do the things that we need to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks for that, Jim. That was a good pitch. <laughs> I was thinking that our neighborhood has a Slack group, which is great for, you know, sharing tools, sharing fruit, all sorts of what people are observing, all those things, but knowing more about them would create more connections in terms of their experiences from the past and so on. Um, things that they might not share in just personal conversations um, that would create more um, deeper relationships and more connections, I think. Perfect example of the value of a visual director. It's mm -hmm. like you get these really intense relational connections in, in a neighborhood group like that. If it was, it's a share group, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so somebody comes over to your house and you give them three cuttings from your gooseberry plant mm -hmm. and you have this interaction and it's rich, but who are all these other people? You sort of get a picture on Facebook or not but it's not a persistent look with questions. And so, you know, that's where a visual directory excels. Um, you know, when, when either your connections are really sparse or there, there are so many people that your network horizon, who you could possibly know is limited to 25, 30 people and there's 200 people out there. Um, those are excellent opportunities. I was um, wondering whether this influenced you in terms of other mapping of questions that are more personal that um, um, whether it opened up something for you in terms of mapping and what's possible maybe in our larger social change transformational work. You have such great questions, Mark. Um, I yeah, I think it was an affirmation that the sorry. It is an affirmation that the, the mapping process itself builds relationship if you pay attention to the questions and if you do it with a community of people that are thinking about the community. Um, 
And ideally, if you can do it with the whole collective, but it gets tough, small groups work pretty well. So that was an affirmation of that or a reaffirmation um, because of actually some mapping questions that Christine had put in, I think this map originally, or maybe another map of asking, how do you know this person? Which evoked appreciations and a level of vulnerability that some people chose that was really impressive. Um, that was one change. The other thing was I created this map in about eight hours or five hours or something, you know, a prototype that I could take to my committee. Actually, it was less than that. And so it was like, oh, I can build these, I can build something that I can show somebody really quickly. Um, so that was like, oh, that lowers the barrier of getting in. Mm. Kumu will do, won't make it pretty like some of these maps, but Kumu will, will take your data um, and give you something without doing any coding. And at least you feel like, oh my God. And immediately that's a like a step up that you like, oh my God, you can show people. I mean, other people will look at it and go, oh my God, we're visible. You know, it's like, you don't get that anywhere, you know, mm -hmm. else easily. Top of the hour, Christine. Yeah. Should we wrap it up? And then if anybody needs to stick around, um, feel free to. But so we um, have a little end of session ritual, which we'll launch into. Um, and give you maybe an extra couple of minutes, which isn't a big deal, but I mean, not even worth mentioning. So I'm sorry I mentioned it, but anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, so the goodbye ritual is we'll all unmute for ourselves if you want to do this with us. I will count down three, two, one. When we get to one, we just all at the same time, just together, uh, give each other our blessings, our greetings uh, for the for the rest of your day and then jump off. And if you don't, if you want to stick around, just hold on until everybody's done jumping off and then we'll see who remains. So let's go ahead and unmute. And if you're going to play with us and we'll go three, two, one. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Have everyone. a great day. Thank you. Love I hope everyone. you have a great day. Yep. Have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.